Site-specific recombination, abbreviated SSR, is a method utilized in molecular biology that exchanges DNA segments possessing at least a certain degree of sequence homology. This form of genetic engineering is specific, fast, and efficient. It has been implemented in simple prokaryotic and more complex eukaryotic systems. In this module, we will discuss SSR in the context of transgenic mice. To be able to understand the use of site-specific recombination in the mouse-animal model, we will discuss four main topics. First, we will present a brief history of transgenic mice. Then we will describe the need for site-specific recombination in these genetically modified animals. Following, we will discuss the process of Crelox recombination. And finally, we will show how the Crelox system of site-specific recombination is used, developing knockout mice. Transgenic mice were first developed by Mario Capecci in the 1980s. Dr. Capecci invented a method to change or remove a gene within a mouse genome by hijacking the cell's own homologous recombination. This repurposing of the host cell's processes earned him a Nobel Prize in 2007. In order to perform this method, embryonic stem cells are harvested from the inner cell mass of a blastocyst of a white mouse. A blastocyst is a pre-implantation embryo a few days after fertilization. The inner cell mass lies within the blastocyst surrounded by a cellular layer called the trophoblast. After harvesting the embryonic stem cells, you plate them in a culture dish and grow them in vitro. A DNA sequence is developed that is very similar to the original gene but sufficiently different enough to cause the new gene to be inactive. This gene also carries one or two markers that do not exist in the mouse genome, such as a fluorescent gene like GFP or a drug resistance gene. The new genetic sequence is introduced to the stem cells by electroporation. Electroporation is a method that applies an electrical current to cells that increases the cell membrane permeability, thus allowing molecules such as DNA to be introduced into the cell. A small portion of the cells will undergo homologous recombination and incorporate the new DNA sequence into their genome. The cells that underwent homologous recombination will be identified by screening for fluorescence or drug resistance. These cells will then be expanded in culture and injected into the recipient blastocyst, usually a different coat color than the donor mouse, such as gray. The resulting embryo will contain stem cells from the original gene from the gray mouse and new gene from the white mouse. This embryo will then be implanted into the foster mother. In this example, it is a gray mouse. The embryos will develop and the resulting offspring will be chimeris, containing both the original and new gene, or a normal gray mouse without an altered genome. The chimeric mouse will be crossed with another gray mouse. Some of the offspring will be heterozygous for the altered gene and will be white, or will contain the original gene and be gray. The resulting heterozygous mouse can be bred with one another to produce mice that are homozygous for the new gene to develop a transgenic knockout strain. Although the method developed by Dr. Capecci was revolutionary, there were also major drawbacks of this method. For example, some genetic knockouts can cause abnormal development of the animal. It can also lead to early embryonic death or neonatal lethality. Another downside is the resulting animal will have an inherited mutated state that can limit the user if the desired model is an acquired disease. Therefore, the need arose for a method that could result in transgenic animals with mutations that were site and time specific. Fortunately, researchers were able to introduce bacteriophage and yeast-derived site-specific recombination systems into mammalian cells. As described at the beginning of this module, site-specific recombination is a type of genetic recombination in which a genetic exchange takes place between homologous segments of DNA using enzymes called recombinases. These enzymes are derived from bacteria and fungi that catalyze directionally sensitive DNA exchange reactions between 30 to 40 nucleotide short target site sequences that are all specific to each recombinase. Most site-specific recombinases are grouped into one of two families, serine or tyrosine. Some examples of the serine recombinase family are gamma-delta resolvase from the TN1000 transposon, TN3 resolvase from the TN3 transposon, 
and Phi-C31 integrase from the Phi-C31 phage. Some examples of the tyrosine recombinase family are cyclization recombinase and flipase recombinase. The two recombinase families perform reactions with similar outcomes. However, the two families are unrelated to each other, having different protein structures and reaction mechanisms. Cre recombinase, also known as cyclization recombination, is a tyrosine recombinase enzyme derived from the P1 bacteriophage, and it was developed by Dr. Brian Sauer initially for use in activating gene expression in mammalian cell lines in the late 80s. This recombinase was first used in mice in the mid-90s to manipulate T lymphocytes. Here you can see the use of four tyrosines working together to nick two strands of DNA for recombination. Cree recombinase interacts with recognition sites with DNA called LOXP sites. LOXP stands for locus of crossing over of bacteriophage P1. This is a 34 base pair sequence consisting of two 13 base pair palindromic repeated sequences with an 8 base pair core region, which determines the orientation of the target site. The result of Cree mediated recombination is dependent upon the location and relative orientation of the LOXP sites within the DNA strand. The result of Cree mediated recombination is dependent upon the location and relative orientation of the LOXP sites, giving three main types of recombination. Here, the LOXP sites are on the same DNA strand and are in opposite orientations. Recombination results in an inversion, and the region of DNA between the LOXP sites is reversed. If the sites face in the same direction, the sequence between the LOXP sites is excised as a circular piece of DNA which is not maintained. This is therefore named as deletion. If the sites are on separate DNA strands, a translocation event is generated at the LOXP sites where the gene of interest is lo now located on a separate DNA strand. The Cree recombinase method of site-specific recombination is one of the most commonly used methods to form transgenic mice with acquired mutations versus the inherited mutations that were discussed at the beginning of this module. The method to attain this type of mouse is similar to the traditional method with some modifications that allow both spatial and temporal control of Cree recombinase activity. The spatial control of genetic alteration involves the selection of a tissue-specific promoter to drive Cree expression, for example, using a kidney-specific cadherin promoter for renal-specific activity. Temporal control takes advantage of various ligand binding domains that have been developed, such as fusing the Cree enzyme with a mutated ligand binding domain for the human estrogen receptor, ERT. This imparts temporal control because when mice are introduced to the drug tamoxifen, an estrogen receptor antagonist, the Cree ERT construct is able to penetrate the nucleus and induce targeted mutation.